Have you heard of Twinkle Champion cards? This is a fun trading card game that doubles as an incentive scheme to encourage and reward students in the classroom. In this video, I'll talk you through what Twinkle Champion cards are, how to play, and also how to integrate them into the classroom. If you want to skip ahead to a specific part of this video, you can use the timestamps, and I'll also put these in the video description below. In a nutshell, Champion cards are a collectible card game where children can collect monster cards to battle their friends. There are 20 unique monsters to collect, so let's meet a few of them. This is Chalkboard, who has sworn revenge on his nemesis and replacement, Whiteboard. There's also the Grammar Police, who are probably the reason why there's no typos in this game. And the poor Triangle, who is still waiting for the day he is taken out of the box first, aka before the rain stick or that wooden frog that nobody quite knows how to use. If you take a closer look at the cards, you'll find different details and stats that you'll need to use to play the game. Let's take a closer look at the monster cards. All the monsters are part of a collective that is linked to school subjects, and you'll find this written at the top of the card. Over in the top right hand corner are the health points, or HP. Each monster starts with a certain amount of health points, but as they take damage from fighting other monsters, this number will go down. When a player's HP is reduced to zero, their opponent will win the game. Next to the health points are the monster's attack points, which you can use to attack with. This is how much damage you can inflict on your opponent's HP. If you look at the center of the card, you'll find more information about the monster so you can get to know them better. And down the bottom are the monster's skill levels. These numbers tell us the monster's speed, power, and intelligence points. These will come into play when you're using the wild cards or in the simpler version of the game. Speaking of wild cards, what are those? Let's take a closer look. Wild cards can take the game in different directions, either being really helpful or really not. So good luck. They come in three different categories or classes, booster, damage, and health. From their names, you may be able to deduce what kind of effects the different classes have. Damage leading to somebody getting hurt, health leading to somebody getting health or protection in some form, and booster leading to a fun or not so fun surprise. Let's take a look at an example. This is Plaster and Lolly, which is a health class card. When you get a wild card, check to see whether you need to play it immediately or if you can keep it to use later. When playing a wild card, place it face up. If you've picked up a keep card and you want to hang on to it to use later, place it face down next to you. Keep cards give you the option of using it at the beginning of one of your turns. Once you've used a card, you add it to the discard pile and then continue the game as normal. For example, this card says it can give you back 15 HP. So if you drew this card but you were at full health, it might not be helpful to use it straight away. You might want to save it for later. So let's get into how to play the game. Now that we understand what monster and wild cards are, let's play the game with them. Shuffle your wild cards and place the stack face down in the playing field. Once we start playing, there will be a discard pile for used wild cards to go into. To begin the game, players select a monster card and place it face up in the playing field. The player that goes first is decided by who has the fastest monster. So whoever has the most speed points on their monster card. In this case, it's the chalkboard. Now players take turns to play. You have two options of what you can do on your turn. Option one is to attack your opponent and option two is to draw a wild card. In this example, the chalkboard may want to do option two, which is to draw a wild card. It looks like they picked up a booster class card called Rock, Paper, Scissors, which needs to be played immediately. It says to face off with your opponent in a quick fire round of Rock, Paper, Scissors. The winner chooses to either regain 10 health points or add 10 to their attack points to use instantly. Let's say the chalkboard won and chose to attack. They would then add 10 to their usual 25 attack points and attack Ancient Fossil for 35 points of damage. This would take them from 200 health points to 165 health points. Not bad. Now, because that wild card has been used, the player would need to add it to the discard pile and continue playing. Now it would be Ancient Fossil's turn. They're going to do the other of the two options, which is attack. The chalkboard has 130 HP and Ancient Fossil has 25 attack points. This means we would subtract 25 from 130, leaving Chalkboard with 105 HP. At the end of their turn, it would be Chalkboard's turn again. At this point in the game, the Chalkboard has 105 HP and Ancient Fossil has 165 HP. The game would keep going just like this until somebody's health points are reduced to zero. Now let's take a look at a scorecard. All players should have one of these and there's enough space for three rounds. Write your name at the top, 
then the name of the monster and its HP at the start of the game. You can write your opponent at the bottom too, unless you're playing in a group, then just ignore this. As the game goes on, subtract any points that have been lost and keep a running total of your HP. Use an additional piece of paper to help you with calculating numbers. The shields down the bottom each represent a round, so write the initials of the winner in here to keep track. If you're playing tournament style, it's the best of three wins. Let's talk about playing in a group. When in a group, play will travel around the circle in a clockwise direction. And the winning monster is the last one standing when everybody else's health points are reduced to zero. When attacking in a group, you would choose a monster that you want to go after. Once you've made your move, your turn is over and it's the next person's go. Another variation of this game is to decide at the beginning on a time limit that everybody agrees to. This way you can say that whoever has the most HP when the time runs out is the winner. That's pretty much everything you need to know to play. So let's talk about how Twinkle Champion cards can be used as a tool for encouragement in the classroom. To collect monster cards, children need to earn merit points, otherwise known as monster points. Once they've collected 10 points, these can be traded in for a card. Students can earn these by being kind to others, contributing in class, doing their best, challenging themselves, and cooperating well with others. Merit points can be tracked and collected with these printable bookmarks, which can then be traded in for a card when full. Everything you need to play and set up Twinkle Champion cards in the classroom can be downloaded with the Champion Card Starter Pack. Once you've printed out the resources in the pack, the only other things you'll need to play is a dice, a coin, and some kind of writing implement to keep track of the points. There are also other resources on the Twinkle website that can complement Twinkle Champion cards, so make sure you take a look around if you're interested. Oh, and don't forget to leave a comment on the website letting us know how you enjoyed the game. Thank you for watching and have fun playing!